For Park 4 of Groundwater, we're going to be looking at um, confined aquifer systems. These will have a lot of the same features that your unconfined systems had. They will also be a little bit different. Um, different. We're going to explore how they're similar and how they're different, give you some power to compare and contrast these systems, and understand what they can do. So to understand this better, we're going to now go to uh, another aquifer system and look at it from above and see what we can spot. All right, here we are looking high above Monterey Bay, California. There's Santa Cruz over on the uh, upper right, um, Monterey over on the, uh, at the top of the screen. And if you look closely, as we're going to zoom into the beautiful Santa Cruz Mountains, epicenter of the uh, Loma Prieta quake, what we're seeing is, you might notice that nice, beautiful redwood forest all the way up the slopes. Then you have this weird sort of line right here in the land that sunlight goes from thick forest to kind of more shrubby chaparral, even grassland. Even though you'd expect the uh, rainfall and precipitation rate would be higher at higher elevations. What's going on here? Ah, the reason for this is one, um, slopes that face too far in the sun tend to get uh, a lot more, uh, tend to be a lot more bare. Also, there's a little bit of marine layer effect, but the reason this is such a definitive line, notice how it like cuts right across the canyons. It doesn't like even seem to care about any of the other features of the landscape, is that what you're looking at is a much more permeable rock outcropping at the summit of this ridge, coming in contact with a less permeable rock. So as we follow this, um, this is a permeable rock that um, so we're just going to follow it, look at what we see through here, and we see this broad agriculture area, Freedom and the uh, Pajaro River Valley, a whole number of strawberry farms in this area. Maybe you'll find uh, pretty much some of the finest strawberries in the country are grown here, often under questionable labor practices, but uh, So I don't really see a whole lot here that looks, gives you signs of aquifer. I see a uh, sewage treatment plant, uh, all that. Let's take a look at what this looks like in other, uh, from a profile view. So we're gonna go into profile view here. We're gonna take a, uh, so this is gonna look a lot like your standard confined aquifer. In fact, there's even going to be a part of this that's going to behave very much like an unconfined aquifer. However, there's also going to be some things that behave very differently. So the difference between a confined aquifer and an unconfined aquifer is that an unconfined aquifer has something known as a confining layer. Usually there's some outcrop of a less permeable rock above your uh, so just like the last time we're gonna do a little sandstone here and we're gonna color the rest of this rock sort of gray to uh, indicate it's more shale like. We have a little shale here, and so now you have two confining layers. You have a uh, aqua chart here. Aqua chart here. And you're going to get a second aquitard on top of your system. So you still have recharge going in here. 
And you're still even going to have a Porsche. This behaves kind of like a confined system. You'll see a really well-defined area where there is an unsaturated zone and a direct connection to the surface. However, unlike your, um, unlike your unconfined system, you get deep enough into this and um, get an aquifer that is uh, saturated from top to bottom and has a confining layer on it. So in, the sun so in this uppermost section, it's going to behave very much like an unconfined aquifer. You're going to have the water tail moves up and down as uh, during periods of higher rainfall or higher recharge, and then moves down during dry spells, et cetera, et cetera. But the difference is that um, when you start extending that water table a little bit further, ah, the uh, hydraulic head, once you get to this confining layer, this aquitard is going to be often above the level of the aquitard. In fact, we can even get is a conf um, is you can get a uh, water table that is higher than the land surface in some cases. So we call this instead of calling it a water table because it's not the boundary between where the rocks are saturated more. We call it a a potentiometric surface. This is, and quite simply put, this is the height to which water in a well would rise if you uh drilled a well there. So this is kind of interesting, yeah. There's not a water table over here, but um, I have this potentiometric surface over here. So this whole thing is saturated through its entire thickness. This leads to some interesting phenomena. So right here, if you were to uh, dig, drill a well, let's say, let's drill a little well here. I think we can do that pretty well. Strong colorful well. Either wells. So if we were to drill a well right here, Water as well would rise to right about here. It would rise actually above the confining layer. What happens if your potentiometric surface is above the water table? Oh, this is where life gets fun. We drill well into this uh, area here. Let's not drill quite this high. Now, your water it, your um, water in the well is going to be higher than the land surface. That means that the hydraulic head at the land surface is lower than the hydraulic head at the bottom of the well. So when you get in these circumstances, is a well that will flow without any pumping whatsoever. So water's going down here. It's going to go up this well and come out like a little fountain. As so we call this well, we call it an artesian well. If you look at some of the names of uh, cities in and around, uh, in and around the uh, greater LA area, you actually see plenty of references to this phenomenon. You see cities like um, Artesia, you see Fountain Valley in the uh, there it is, Fountain Valley. This is reference to the uh, fact this area probably was over an aquifer that at one point had artesian pressures. If you follow the 91 freeway to its uh, Bitter end, you'll eventually find yourself in Artesia. Oh, there it is, yes. Also named for the fact that the city once had Artesian wells. So the um, when you look at sort of various texts describing various historical events, you sometimes see things like, um, you'll hear stories of someone hitting a uh, rock with a stick or something like that, creating maybe a fault or a crack, and then suddenly the water 
gushing out of that crack. In this case, what you have is an artesian spring. Again, what you're looking at here is a confined aquifer. So we're going to take you on a tour of some of the features that you find in aquifer systems. Systems and look at how aquifers interact with rivers and some of the environmental challenges facing aquifer systems. <laughs> 